Hi, NARD Troopers. Today, I want to talk to you about the um, weird um, way that the mind of a narcissist works. Um, and I have a little story for you that is sort of interesting, I think. Um, I grew up with, um, my dad was Thai, my mom was Caucasian, and um, the Thai part of my family was always steeped in a kind of mystical Buddhist um, reincarnating um, idea of transcendental meditation and uh, star charts. And my sister's husband uh, from Bangkok read a star chart for me back in about 1988. And he told me I was going to have a daughter, which I did. He told me that I would have an estrangement from my oldest son, which I did. He told me that I would always be very close to my youngest son, which I am, even though distance separates us. And he told me that I would be a teacher forever, like my whole life. And I have been. And then he told me that after the age of 60, that he saw nothing for me, just nothing. And I said, wow, does that mean I'm gonna die when I'm 60? He said, I don't know, I can't tell you, but I see nothing there. So it could mean that, it probably means that, but it could be something else. So, um, I've been telling my husband, a covert cerebral somatic mid-range narcissist would be the exact diagnosis there. I told him there's been a prophecy and it says I'm going to die um, by the time I'm 60. And, um, so we were married almost 15 years and <clears throat> looking back on it, I think uh, he was counting on that. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I think looking back on it that um, he was always banking on the thought that I'd be gone by 60. He'd have a pretty hefty inheritance with the house and some life insurance and then he could go on and begin chapter two of his life right away. Now, <clears throat> so I did reach 60 <laughs> and I didn't die, obviously, which I feel kind of like I should apologize to him for not dying on time, but I didn't and I, di I didn't die. I did apologize. I said, gee, I really thought I was gonna be gone by now. Surprise! <laughs> mm. So he never really said, oh, hmm. but I know he thought it. I think he thought it. Um, maybe. So <clears throat> what is the point of all of this? <laughs> well, I didn't die when I said I would. So maybe that was a deal breaker that he just couldn't process after that after the fact that I still was here, um, remaining alive. But I think more importantly, it shows us something about how the mind of a narcissist works. They don't think like you and I. Part of their brain is not developed. The amygdala, um, there's not as much gray matter. Uh, they've done um, MRIs and CT scans and have actually seen the um, differences in the physiological um, actual structure of the brain and um, it does not allow them to feel certain things or think certain things. So here are some of the things that describe the mind of a narcissist and it might explain why when I failed to die on time that that was just a non-negotiable thing that um, that he had to respond to the way he did. 
So first of all, they do, are, do not um, ever take accountability for anything. They never ex admit their mistakes um, ever, and they never apologize and say they're sorry genuinely for anything. Um, they blame shift and make everything your fault in one way or another. Um, I think other qualities have to do with their inability to have compassion and to feel other people's suffering. I've often thought my husband, if he had ever even loved me a little bit, he could not have done what he did to me in the end. It just wouldn't be possible. Um, even if I didn't like someone or if I didn't love them anymore, I would, not, I would be incapable of doing anything close to what he did because I would know how it would just destroy the other person and it would hurt me to hurt them. I couldn't live with myself. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. He doesn't have any of those problems. Um, they also have a convenient way of just flipping a switch and turning things off, on and off. There's no fear. They, I don't, I've never seen him afraid of anything. I've never seen a sense of urgency and anxiousness. Uh, he's always calm and steady, non-reactive, to even the most horrendous things. Snake in the garage, I'm gonna pick it up almost with my hands, put it in a duffel bag, put it in the back seat, relocate it, no problem. Uh, I'm going to uh, almost have a car accident, near death experience uh, in a car accident. Truck hits us on the freeway. No fear, no reaction, nothing. He just keeps talking, never misses a beat. I'm over there yelling and screaming, oh my gosh, did you see? We almost died there. And talking and never missing a beat, uh, never acknowledging the, that, you know, there's, there's that fear thing when the chemicals that flood your body and your heart pounds and catches your breath and your throat and you're like, ha, ah, ah, ha, you know, that none of that, just straight line. Um, there's projection, the things that they're guilty of, they will many times accuse you of. Mm. There's a smear campaign that follows a discard so that after they depart, they try to ruin you with everyone else. I'm not sure why. I think it makes them feel more justified in what they've done. Um, and But most importantly, they have this magical thinking that uh, that is not rooted in reality. It's not even optimism, really. It's just magical thinking that somehow this, that, or the other is gonna happen. He told me crazy things about manifesting large sums of money and uh, being an ascended master and having superpowers and things like this. Um, the last couple of times I talked to him, these were things that he said. And I just thought, you know, you're, you can't just be a, a regular average person going through something you know, that you need to process or think about to make sure you know the consequences of what you're doing. At one point I said, karma is going to be a bitch and it's coming after you, after what you did to me, how you just yanked that rug right out from underneath me, reassuring me, telling me you love me, no hint or clue that you were unhappy or wanting to leave until the day you just do it. <laughs> it just, who does that? Uh, that is, uh, and I would say that, and then the response was, was something crazy. Word salad, they do something called word salad, which is uh, where they just circuitously talk in circles. I used to love commuting with him back and forth. We taught at the same school for years, and <clears throat> the commute was not short. We were in the car for over an hour every day. And I enjoyed listening to him talk because he talked about all kinds of things, pretty interesting things, I think. Um, but he just kept going and he always had stories and perspectives and a narrative and, and uh, rarely was it me talking about much. It was him in story mode telling this thing. And um, it was almost like he was reading from a script and uh, it wasn't exactly interactive. It was weird. And when we would try to talk about something important, it wouldn't go anywhere. There would be a lot of words that would know um, appropriate reactions and, and actions and 
things that are supposed to follow a discussion. Um, so cognitive dissonance, gaslighting, word salad, blame shifting, projection, repression, he, his shame that manifested itself in some pretty demonic ways. Um, just so many things, so many things about uh, the way a narcissist thinks and feels or lacks feeling rather that make it explainable that when I didn't die, when I said I probably would, <laughs> the response was not what a normal person's response would have been. And this is just one example. I have hundreds, thousands that, of the time that we were together, that we were married all those years. And um, yeah, thousands of examples of just very atypical, abnormal, weird things um, that I think now I'm gonna recognize those red flags and, um, and not be moving towards anyone, friend, colleague, boss, anyone that I may meet. If they have those qualities, that's a sign, warning, warning, <laughs> this person is not okay. They're dysregulated. Um, they are suffering from a disorder that um, makes it impossible for them to, to be like a normal human being with normal feelings and, and that kind of stuff. And that makes them dangerous, dangerous with your heart. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I'm past 60 and I'm still alive. If the COVID-19 doesn't kill me, who knows, maybe I have a few more years left. And uh, that was not prophesied. Maybe the prophecy was that shortly after I turned 60, the life I knew before was gonna end and I'm gonna have a new life. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be reinvented, repurposed, reimagined, re something. <laughs> reanimated. I don't know. Maybe that's what it was. I'm going to become a completely different human being than who I've always been. And that's why they didn't see me on the chart. Who knows? Who knows? You know, I have two birth certificates. There is some question as to maybe exactly how old I am. Maybe he just got the dates off a little bit and something is coming for me. Gosh, my ex really should have been just a little bit more patient. It's only been nine months. If he waited 10 or 11, hey, he might have still gotten the inheritance and the house and the life insurance, but I uh, guess he couldn't wait. And um, who knows? We don't know when we're, when we're leaving, when we're checking out, when we're not going to be here anymore. So we have to make the best of the time that we have here. But I wanted to share that with you. There's so many weird, quirky, abnormal, and scary things about a person with a cluster B personality disorder that is definitely worth doing your due diligence to understand what that is and try to understand that everything you think is appropriate behavior and action and things that a regular person would just do, just know to do just naturally, that's off the table. That's not gonna happen. So start paying attention to these things. Read about it and start watching, looking, listening, and you're gonna see some things that will just amaze you and then maybe you can take action. Um, so that's my message for today. Um, everybody stay safe, stay out of harm's way in these really uh, dystopian times and hopefully we'll be back to normal before too long, whatever that is. Our normal, the normal, the a neurotypical average person normal. That would be great. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> okay, all right. See you later. Bye.